Hello everyone, welcome to iSignal. So in the second video, I am going to discuss about the complete industry cycle, how it actually works from the wireless perspective. I think this will be helpful for the people, especially coming from different backgrounds. So I have just mentioned few of the backgrounds here uh, in the wireless people who are working uh, and struggling for a long time and stuck in the career. I got so many requests from different wireless professionals who are working from non-protocol background. So basically uh, what I observed from the industry perspective as per my experience is concerned. Okay, so people with 3 years, 4 years at the initial stage of the career uh, with 6 years, 10 years, 15 years. So unfortunately without knowing the complete industry cycle they have stuck for so long years in different uh, stages of their career. Okay, so today I wanted to throw a light on what is the industry cycle, when the jobs are present, when the jobs are not present, when a particular technology is going to be saturated. So this is the main uh, uh, thing I wanted to give in this particular video. I wanted to bring some enlightened people who are especially stuck in the different parts of the uh, nature of work in the wireless. Okay, so now let's get into this particular video. Now you can see. Wireless, I think we are seeing for the past 30 years, right? 2G, 3G and 4G. Currently, we are uh, working on the 5G. So basically, earlier, uh, the technology starts with uh, fundamental uh, technology enablers and also it's, it's all, it all actually starts with uh, research, basically. So when uh, with different researchers propose the uh, things in the different conferences, and from that we will come to some conclusion uh, what can be standardized, what cannot be standardized. Right here the standardization is the GSM forum earlier, earlier in the 2G days. Uh, right from the 3G days it has been converted into the third generation partnership project and from then onwards the things are actually continuing. Okay, Now you can see for every technology to come into the picture there is a complete life cycle that has to go through once the research results has been standardized that can be taken into the standards by the different stakeholders like Intel, Samsung, Ericsson and different con different uh, uh, contributors basically to the 3GPP uh, standards. Okay, So after the standardization is done and coming getting into the production it will take another one year, two years and feature development multiple things will happen. That's why the overall cycle is around 10 years. But here different nature of works are there. Uh, I think some of you have uh, come uh, come into the category of NPO and site engineers, RF, right? Multiple categorization and multiple nature of work, works basically. Okay. So there is no protocol side here. Okay. So and uh, main thing what is actually happened is uh, it went into the saturation stage after 10 years or 12 years for every technology. So what will actually happen again the next technology related research will start. It means from the deployment perspective and from the feature development perspective once it has went into the complete maintenance stage there are no RF jobs. We keep on working on some uh, fine tuning of that particular thing which means we are completely stuck in that particular domain okay, or the nature of work. Uh, majority of the time I think uh, we already know that we are working in the site uh, at the uh, towers and the installation, erections and other things. right? So this kind of uh, uh, awareness what I am actually trying to give with respect to the access protocols won't be uh, there in, in the, in, in, into the picture basically. So that's why I am just trying to give some detailed insights. Okay, So basically the outline is like it starts from the research phase and after the research standardization it went into the standards. Once the standards has been done, the development team will be uh, developing the features and it will go until to the site maintenance or uh, installations or patch applying and different upgradations related to the uh, software whatever. Okay. Now uh, what about the jobs basically? right? So this complete industry cycle if you know then you will come to know in which phase we have to shift in which career we have to shift and time to time because 10 years is a very big journey 12 years is a very big journey right so we will be knowingly or unknowingly will be stuck in that particular career okay and also not much growth in the career so basically it will be 
uh, done by uh, non engineers also that is also uh, one of the uh, bitter truth basically so from the engineers perspective probably my suggestion is to go into the access domain which is lt or nr of course we can go into the core domain as well okay i'm just uh, in today's discussion i'm going to give only the access perspective okay so now coming to the latest technologies lt and nr we can see the ran access protocols so you can choose a career either in the development or in the testing in the ran access protocol so what is this ran access protocol we have categorized with respect to the jobs for the either the, for the developers or for the testers right here i am just mentioning those things for a developer we need two things one is domain knowledge compulsory for the for the testers and developers both but for the developers when because they are going to be the implementers right we have to acquire the knowledge from the c c++ and data stream which means we have to be very very curious into the coding very much interested in coding we should have so, so, solid uh, coding skills are actually required okay so uh, the once we get the skills okay we can jump into l1 l2 l3 these are the predominant terminology uh, that will be used in the across the industry so five means physical layer which is l1 mac rlc pdcp is uh, l2 layer and we have scheduler also uh, if we are considering the skills in the base station but we can apply for both uv and the base station as well uh, it means number of jobs in the service companies and product companies we can get the job there so people will be uh, uh, talking in the terminologies like l1 l2 and l3 so the meaning of l1 is physical layer l2 means this one and l3 means rrc okay so this is only related to the domain and when it comes to the tester we have they will be concentrating more on the complete end to end call flow they are not much into the deep aspects of the protocol which means l1 l2 l3 majority of the time they won't be focusing on because for them the end to end call flow is a highest priority like handover scenarios mobility scenarios voat vonr right uh, and also normal l3 call attach and ping these are all the different scenarios what uh, typically a protocol tester will do now coming to the job and the ratio of the jobs unfortunately for every 50 developers one tester will be uh, i mean there will be a openings in this so my recommendation is we can go into the testing also if there is a chance we can go into the testing also okay so but we have to decide you have to decide whether it is a uh, developer job i have to go or i can go into the tester job okay so but the fact is for every 50 developers one tester will be there so developer jobs are high and tester job is less right so accordingly you can choose you are in the which stage of career so i would just like to recommend okay so for 0 to 5 years and 5 to 10 years right and 10 to 15 years experience if you have if it, if you are having 0 to 5 years i will definitely recommend to go into the developer domain developer uh, roles basically developer roles okay so now uh, coming to the 5 to 10 5 to 10 it's okay i think we can we can go into the development domain you can uh, make your road map till the architect level architect level so that is the main thing but sometimes people used to switch uh, into the management roles and depending on the interest okay and also people who are still interested in the protocol term and they can go into the specification just now i have mentioned related to the research like principal engineers this kind of uh, roles people can be in that okay so that's the main thing and yeah this is about uh, the uh, chip level and also on top of the chip there will be a drivers on top of the drivers there will be operating system sometimes these two are a combination and later stack will be there network card will be there and tcp ip which means this is a flow basically until whatsapp how it can be executed so for more details we can if you want uh, you can just uh, give it to the comments okay uh, what are the different parts of the things that you have to know as a part of 5g technology i am sure uh, you got some info uh, related to the complete cycle about the career where we can switch when we can switch what is the time we can switch right so if you need further info you can just queue on the comment section below okay please like share and subscribe so i am done with the discussion okay and see